Hi, I'm Neharika Rajput. I'm a wildlife artist, creative conservationist, a visual science communicator, and a national geographic explorer, mostly based out of Delhi. Here I am sitting next to my exhibit in Kodaikanal, Tamil Nadu, and it's titled Birds of the Shola Sky Islands. So, the story goes I met uh, Dr. Vijayan Robin, who's an evolutionary biologist and has been studying the Shola birds found in the Shola Sky Islands for almost 23 years and uh, I think uh, it was back in 2019 that I met him and he told me about what was really happening to these birds and the story behind how they are losing their habitat and that is what really you know drew me to put together a project proposal and you know submit it to Nat Geo and uh, luckily I got the grant and uh, here we are with the exhibit which is all ready. Um, so basically these um, these birds that, that are found in the Shola Sky Islands, uh, some of them uh, do not fly from one mountain top to the other because the valleys are too deep and wide and also there are fluctuations in the temperature. So, uh, you know, uh, just right after Pleistocene, which is, um, you know, the Ice Age, uh, there was a lot of fragmentation that happened in the Western Ghats because of which these valleys became so deep and wide. And uh, because these birds are not flying from one mountain top to the other, um, they evolved in isolation. Uh, so that is the interesting part. And then, uh, you know, these birds have been losing their habitat at a drastic rate. Uh, in, I think in 1973, the Shola grasslands were around 1360 square kilometers. Uh, but by 2017, 516 square kilometers had already been lost and we are in 2023 now. So you can only imagine what the current status is. Uh, so not only these Shola birds, but other species of frogs, snakes, um, all of them are equally affected. And as such, there is no solution on ground um, to this particular problem. So um, we really don't know what the future of these birds are. Uh, the Nilgiri pipit, which is one of the grassland birds, has gone locally extinct. Um, so yeah, that's the plight of these birds. So that is why we put together this uh, exhibition on all the Shola birds and put together an exhibition on 12 species found in the Shola Sky Islands. And we have 12 birds here. So I specialize in building hyperrealistic sculptures of birds. Um, and I use paper, wire and uh, regular epoxy to make these sculptures. Now, uh, the process is uh, highly complicated and intricate and also time consuming. So I usually start by, you know, building the body of the bird. So that is the armature and I make that out of uh, wire and paper. I use newspaper to basically create the body. And then I use thinner wire to just, you know, weave around the body so that everything can be held together. And uh, after that, I stick thin strips of paper just to get an even surface to work on. But um, uh, to go back to the point of how I really begin, it actually begins with a lot of research. So studying these birds uh, from all the different angles possible because, you know, I'm putting together a three-dimensional sculpture. So I need to look at all the different angles and also understand the color of the plumage, the feathers, you know, uh, under different lights. So under sun it looks a certain way, in shade it looks a certain way, if you are seeing it up close in person it looks different. So you really, it becomes difficult for you to actually you know, understand what kind of uh, colors to go with, you know, what should be the final choice and also the placement of these feathers. So how to place them so that they can actually replicate the real birds. So after I stick the thin strips and I get an even surface to work with, I cut out each and every feather individually by hand and I glue it to the bird's body and thereafter I paint the birds. So that is the process uh, in short. Um, also uh, just to add in, uh, you know, the eyes, the beak, the legs etc. made out of regular epoxy. So yeah, the facial features and all of that. So you know, this is just to give you an idea of how I put together these sculptures. Uh, then comes the landscaping part, that is um, how you want to put these birds or where do you want to put these birds so to have them perched on a bark or to you know or to have them perched on a branch or to like in this case we've also showcased the shola grasslands so i've built a lot of those grasslands out of uh, copier mache clay 
So there are different options of also you know um, landscaping in terms of landscaping. Um, yeah, so that is what I have done. And uh, in addition to this visual display, we also have motion sensors that we have installed in this particular exhibit, uh, which is obviously courtesy Arnav. And uh, uh, so we have our, uh, motion sensors for all the 12 birds. So as you walk into the exhibit, the sensors will detect your motion and you can hear the bird calls of all the 12 birds. Uh, so it feels, it gives you the feel of being uh, in the Shola forests and grasslands and it's, I think it comes closest to being a tactile, tangible sort of an experience of being in the forest and the grasslands. So, yeah, so it's, I think it's really, you know, uh, as a visual science communicator, I feel like it's a great experience for anyone who's walking into this space because, uh, you know, it, it gives you the feeling of being in the Shola uh, forest and grasslands. Because it's not always possible, one, for people to venture out into the forests and see these birds. Even if they do, they may not see all the birds. And even if they do see the birds, uh, they're not going to perch there forever. So, uh, this is an opportunity for people to just walk into a space and look at these birds for as long as they want and study them and get to know more about them. Uh, also, as a part of this exhibition, we have uh, put together a website which has all the details of these birds. It's connected to eBird, so it will directly take you there and you know give you all the scientific information that's uh, needed. And uh, of course, there are so many other things that are there on the website. So we've also put together a short animation movie uh, titled Endangered, which is by Satanamo, and uh, you know it, it's an animation movie, so it really you know talks about what's really happening on the ground, what the problems are, etc. And um, yes, the website has a lot of other details about the center where it is uh, displayed at, which is Center for Environment and Humanity in Kodaikinar, Tamil Nadu. And this comes under Kodaikinar International School. So if any of you are visiting Kodaikinar anytime in the near future, it's a permanent display, you should definitely come here and just, you know, um, go through this experience and uh, get the feel of it. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.